This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. SpaceX Starship updates, Roberts Road Development Phase 2 and CRS-19 preparations. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. As always, there has been a lot happening in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. SpaceX is not waiting around after the loss of the Starship Mark 1 prototype. Where in the traditional development cycle there now would be a phase of analysis, in fact SpaceX seems to have had a plan even before they lost the prototype. Work just seems to continue as if nothing happened. The bulkhead that was thrown out by Pop Top Orby, as locals call Mark 1 now, has already been retrieved and brought back onto SpaceX property. No engineers surrounded the piece of evidence though. No officials came to look at it. It was just carried to the scrapyard and is sitting there now, probably just to be ground up and discarded. SpaceX is not wasting any time on the obvious, as it seems that SpaceX already knew this would happen even before the anomaly occurred. And this plan seems to be to massively improve construction standards and methods. Workers on site have finally started utilizing the new ring bending machine that has been sitting there for a while now. As you can see here, it produces rings from a single piece of metal, just bending it into one seamless ring that only needs one weld to connect the two ends into a closed ring. The old rings on Mark 1 were composed of many separate elements, bent and welded many times to make just one ring segment. The problem there is that if you have many welds, you have many possible weak spots. In this picture we can see some workers standing next to the new ring, so we can estimate the height to be roughly the same as on the old ring segments. If we look at the machine making the ring, we can also see that it would not be capable of going much higher. So the proposed double size ring segments will most likely have to wait a bit longer. Nonetheless, this reduces the amount of welds to be inspected down to about 10% of what was the case with the old method. So on a whole tank section, this is a huge improvement over Mark 1. This will also make the Mark 3 prototype much more shiny compared to its predecessor. Mark 3 might actually be a beauty compared to Pop Top Orby. But SpaceX does not seem to stop there. Everything we've seen of a possible Starship Mark 3 construction so far looks much more refined. The second possible Mark III part we can already see being constructed is a new bulkhead. And we can see the same picture here. These are pre-production parts. No grinders or sledgehammers have ever touched these parts. The bend is precise, the cut absolutely straight and the welds seem even and professional. It's still not what you would expect to see on a traditional rocket build though. It's still in the open. It's still not made from exotic materials and the people building it are not wearing masks and white suits. So SpaceX is clearly stepping up the game, but they're still trying a very different approach from what you would see at an SLS construction site. And here's the next local residence rocket slang word for you. Value Village. SpaceX seems to do the same thing we already saw earlier this year. They're trying to hide parts of the construction process from the public by building some sort of Ford made from shipping containers. Earlier this week, a train of pickup trucks pulled them into the shipyard. Wouldn't it have been cool to see these being pulled in by Cybertrucks? SpaceX, you really need to start using more Teslas on site. What better advertisement can you get? These containers have already been arranged to build that new value village right next to the Mark 1 nose cone. My guess right now is that SpaceX will still use the old cone section on the new Mark III prototype, as only the tank section needs to withstand the pressurization. The nose cone has separately built-in header tanks. This will cut Mark III construction time at least in half, which is good news for us. We most likely won't have to wait until mid next year for another possible test attempt. On the other side of the container fort, SpaceX is erecting a new tent as an entrance. So they can manufacture parts inside the tent and then assemble them inside the fort. We might see less pictures of the Mark III construction. SpaceX seems to be much more secretive this time around. This was to be expected though, as with Mark III, SpaceX is obviously entering another phase of construction. The next Starship prototype will be much closer to the real deal as it seems. SpaceX has also received a new load of scaffolding parts, no doubt also in preparation for the Mark III construction. 
These will most likely again go inside the new tank section for easy access. And another delivery has been received on site. These stainless steel parts arrived on another flatbed truck. They're slightly bent and look like the missing parts for the bulkhead that's already in production. Again, these are pre-built parts, nothing made on site. They look much more precise and very much like a whole different level of quality. The same level of refined construction we already saw on Mark 1's lower fins seems to be the new standard for the whole tank section. I can't wait to see Mark 3 on the launch mount now that this next phase finally seems to offer an actual orbital class vehicle. Prior to building the new value village, SpaceX by the way was also busy making a new concrete pad and preparing even more land for a proper foundation. So Starship Mark 3 won't be built in the dirt either. The construction site will be on a properly prepared slab of concrete. All in all, we can clearly see that SpaceX is changing direction. Where Mark 1 was a crude prototype that kept everybody asking if it will ever fly, Mark 3 seems to be the much more proper construction. It all still is far from a traditional rocket construction, but we can already see that the progress is heading in the right direction. If you liked the update, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to not miss any future updates on SpaceX's progress. Robert's Road Development Phase 2 Last episode, we looked at the progress already made at the Robert's Road Starship construction site in preparation for a shift from the Coco site to Robert's Road. This time we'll do the next logical thing. We'll look at what's gonna happen there in the near future. SpaceX seems to have a preference for sand and wet terrain when it comes to Starship construction. Where in Boca Chica we saw piling work go down as much as 30 meters to give buildings and jigs stability on the sandy terrain, Roberts Road has to deal with almost the same conditions. Merritt Island, where the Roberts Road shipyard is being built right now, has very wet terrain and the ground is mainly made of sand and brimstone gravel. Not the best foundation for anything bigger than a tent. But as we saw on episode 34, SpaceX wants to build a pretty large facility on the property. Hangars, integration facilities and construction pads, maintenance buildings, parking lots, everything a proper Starship facility needs. To achieve this milestone, SpaceX is about to start phase 2 of the Roberts Road construction. About two-thirds of the land is not prepared yet for any sort of construction work. For this, SpaceX is planning multiple steps to turn this swampy patch of Merritt Island into actually usable land. SpaceX will start by removing mud and slick and replacing it with sand and gravel. For this, they will need to remodel the whole property. Grading and filling work will be done on a large scale and according to the documentation of Phase 2, a large pile of surface material will have to be removed and transported off-site in the process. While doing so, SpaceX will constantly have to maintain proper draining of the surface water. In fact, a large portion of Phase 2 will be about dealing with the surface water and drainage construction. The road will be extended all the way to the other side of the property and the whole patch of land will have to be raised to an elevation of 1.8 meters to lift it above the groundwater table. SpaceX has entered the swamp draining business in preparation for the second big site for Starship construction. The permit is not yet signed, but as soon as it is, SpaceX is going to start major land preparations at Roberts Road. It's not known yet what this bigger part of the property is actually going to be used for, but as always, I'll keep you up to date. CRS-19 Preparations SpaceX is getting ready for the next launch towards the ISS. CRS-19 is SpaceX's 19th mission to resupply the ISS and it is packed with all sorts of science experiments and equipment for the crews of Expeditions 61 and 62. The Cold Atom Lab or CAL will get its first upgrade. It's an experiment that started operations in orbit in May 2018. Its main focus is to produce so-called Bose-Einstein condensates. These are atom vapors only a fraction of a degree warmer than absolute zero. At these temperatures, quantum characteristics can be observed and in space this can be done for a much longer period of time than on Earth due to lack of gravitational effects. The new module for Cal will research if gravity affects all matter in the same way as it should. If the experiment is a success, we'll need new laws of physics. Charming! A new combustion experiment will examine the behavior of flames in microgravity. Japan is sending up a hyperspectral imager to help exploit the planet better. Not so charming. 
Mexico is getting into the satellite network business by researching communications between nanosatellites. Well done! An incredible amount of 40 mighty mice will travel to space for science to research two new methods of combining muscle and bone loss in space. Don't worry, they will return safely after the experiment is done. Rodents in space. A new double garage for ammonia detecting robots will be sent to the ISS to further improve the process of finding ammonia leaks. Ammonia is used on the ISS for cooling and the complicated system of pipes basically is constantly leaking. Sniffing for safety. Finally, someone will check if astronauts eat healthy enough. This stuff can't be good long term, so an investigation is being done to find out if and how it should be improved. Eat healthy. These are only a few of the experiments that will be amongst the 2585 kilograms of cargo sent up to the ISS with CRS-19. The capsule will pay a visit to the ISS for the third time and we will see something that is becoming more and more rare on SpaceX launches. Booster 1059 is brand new. So expect a very shiny Falcon 9 on the pad when it launches on December 4th at 12.51 pm Eastern Standard Time, which is 17.51 UTC for those outside the United States. I will be streaming the launch live with as many of you as I can, so make sure to mark it on your calendar. It is always nice to see a brand new Falcon 9 launch for the first time. One question that gets asked over and over again when it comes to the ISS is if it is really necessary to operate a space station to do this kind of research. Is it really necessary to spend billions on mice floating in space? To better understand what science is and why we invest so many resources into finding the next clue to what the universe is about, Brilliant.org is an excellent place to start. Stuffed full of interesting science, including an easy to understand explanation, Brilliant.org is the door opener to a whole new world of understanding. It explains to you how to approach things in a scientific way. It helps you to understand why the world you're living in is based on millions upon millions of scientific discoveries we managed to achieve in our past and it helps you to understand the most important ones. What are the rules of science? How does math work? What is the foundation? To become the next step on our long road of discovery and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up for free to get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Become a part of scientific tradition. Take that next step with brilliant.org Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will Mark III be the first starship to ever fly and will you watch the CRS-19 mission with me? As always, tell me in the comments. Number 54 done. Two episodes and over 25 minutes of content in just one week. How? With the help of my patrons, of course. They are what makes all this possible in the first place. Help, research, ideas, funding… I couldn't do it without them, so show some love in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. It gives access to our Discord and with it lots and lots of behind the scenes info, discussions and even beta testing of upcoming features. And again we have new arrivals. Everyone please give a warm welcome to Daniel Thompson, Thomas Scott and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. To become the next step on our long road of discoveries and at the same time talk into the camera compared to op to op top poppy cronky prad fed on the on SpaceX's progress. <laughs> it is not. <laughs>